Hello friends, welcome back to Scientific Blunders, where you learn the don'ts first. The first job I had right out of college was actually at a coal-fired power plant. And I used to be really amazed by the amount of physics, chemistry, mathematics that was happening in the real world. And I used to feel like everything that I had studied was actually being used in practice. That was really a great feeling. However, one of the things that really used to confuse me uh, was the step up transformer. So what a step up transformer does is, so the power plant produces power at a certain voltage. So the step up transformer steps up or increases that voltage before the power is transmitted using transmission lines. And this is how I used to think about the problem, right? And obviously this is an over idealization of the real world. But at least it's a framework to think about it, right? So let's say we represented the complex power plant with, you know, turbines and generators and chimneys and boilers. All of the complex complexities were simplified into a simple source of voltage, right? And so this is our idealization of a power plant, and we just treat it as a source of uh, alternating voltage, right? And the entire transmission ne line network, um, for the purposes of simplicity, can be represented using a single resistor, let's say. And so this is our idealization of the entire transmission line network that the power plant connects to. And so the power plant produces voltage at a certain level. Let's call that V. Right, and the resistance of the transmission line is R. Right, oh, I think the N and E disappeared somehow. Okay, and so, um, by Ohm's law, we know that V should equal I times R. And people used to tell me that the reason we need to step up voltage is to reduce current. And because Ohm's law tells us that you know the power or the power loss across a resistor is I squared R, so it's proportional to the square of current. So if you reduce current, uh, you're going to reduce the loss, resistance, resistive losses, right? So people used to tell me, so we need to increase voltage uh, in order to reduce current so that you know, these losses can be reduced. And I never used to understand it um, because I thought that the resistance of a transmission line is its inherent property. So that's not going to change. And if you, if you could increase voltage to reduce current, isn't that a violation of Ohm's law? Well, if this problem confuses you um, like it did me, I really encourage you to pause the video here and think about it um, because it's a really interesting problem and it's a really fundamental um, concept that we can understand from this problem. So hopefully you're done thinking about the problem and let's try to understand where exactly we went wrong. Okay, let me scroll down to create some space. So let's start off with how we idealize the power plant. All right. So obviously a power plant is a complex set of mechanical, electrical equipment, uh, which we simplified, but it is a source of voltage ultimately. And the voltage is going to be sinusoidal, going to vary. It is alternating voltage. And so this representation or this idealization of a power plant is correct. All right. And, and what, what does the power plant connect to, right? The power plant connects to the transmission network. But we need to remember that there is a transformer in between, a step up transformer, right? And that is one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle that we missed here, right? There is a transformer in between, right? And that transformer eventually connects to the transmission line network. And again, if you're an electrical engineer, you are probably disgusted by how uh, you know how much 
we have simplified the problem and this is almost the toy problem at this point and nowhere close to the representation um, that real real world electrical engineers use but at least you know for the purposes of this video it's 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 really a good uh, way to think about the problem okay so there is the power plant which produces voltage v the same voltage we considered here the same resistance r for the transmission line okay this is the primary coil of the transformer and let's say the number of turns in the primary coil is np while the number of turns in the secondary coil is ns so p stands for primary and s stands for secondary all right so what do we know here so let's try to um, frame a bunch of equations so that we can understand what exactly we uh, went wrong with uh, earlier so what we do know is because this is a step up transformer the number of turns in the secondary coil have to be greater than the number of turns in the primary okay and if they were equal it would not change voltage at all and if it was the other way around it would be a step down transformer we also know that so let's call this vp for uh, voltage in the primary circuit so vp would equal so there's going to be a current flowing in the primary circuit so vp is going to be ip times the impedance of the primary circuit and the way a transformer works is that there's typically a core that connects the primary and the secondary coil so that way um the magnetic field produced by this these coils is going to induce voltage in the secondary coil and so that's going to be a voltage in the secondary circuit as well so vs uh, the voltage in the secondary circuit is going to be is which is the current in the secondary circuit times r i'm assuming that this is a purely resistive circuit again not uh, nowhere close to the complexity of the real world but you know this is a toy problem that we have simplified it to and what else do we know we also know that by the conservation of energy so transformers are pretty efficient and even in the real world to the best of my knowledge the losses in a transformer are really small on the order of 1% or uh, or even lesser maybe so we can definitely assume um that energy is conserved and so the power in the primary circuit is going to be vp times ip power is current times voltage and that must equal vs times is all right um is there anything else we know well yes um the voltage in the primary and the secondary circuit are related to the number of coils number of turns in the primary and secondary coil so we also know that vs over vp voltage in the secondary over voltage in the primary must equal ns over np and if any of these is any of these equations seem unfamiliar i encourage you to review um the topic of alternating current and these are all fairly standard equations right and what we want to do so let's just to make sure we have an apples to apples comparison let's say this was vp and although we completely ignored the transformer here um let's say somehow the transformer is should have been baked into these equations right somehow right so vp was equal to ip times r uh and which is wrong but you know this is how we thought about the problem originally and let's try to find the correct relationship between vp and ip so that we are we can understand where exactly we went wrong Okay, and let me change colors, right? So what we want to do is relate VP and IP and eliminate the other variables. So we want to relate VP and IP to R using just the number of turns in the primary and secondary coil. Um, let's see if we are able to do that. All right. So the first thing we can do. So let me label these equations. So we have one, two, three, and four. the first thing we can do is using equation 3 so using equation 3 vp equals 
आई एस ओवर आई पी आई एस ओवर आई पी टाइम्स बी एस राइट एंड वी ऑल्सो कैन कंबाइन इक्वेशन थ्री इंटू फोर बिकॉज वी पी और वी एस ओवर वी पी इज जस्ट आई पी ओवर आई एस राइट एंड दिस इज एक्चुअली अ वेरी यूजफुल रिप्रेजेंटेशन बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन इन वन सिंगल इक्वेशन एंड नाउ आई एस ओवर आई पी इज जस्ट एन पी ओवर एन एस इजिंग इक्वेशन फोर and what is vs is there something we can something we can do about vs well vs is is times r all right remember we want to eliminate everything we want to ultimately relate vp to ip r and just the number of turns right we want to eliminate is we don't want to we don't want anything to do with the second recoil just so that we have an apples to apples comparison and so what what else can we do well i so we still have np over ns is is nothing but vp so using equation 3 we can eliminate is from this equation so that is just going to be vp over vs times ip times r and if you have seen the equation 4 vp over vs is just np over ns so this is going to equal np over ns the whole square times ip times r all right and this my friends is the actual equation uh, at least in the way we idealize the problem Uh, this is the relationship between the primary voltage um the primary current and the resistance right so let me just rewrite this let me write rewrite this equation right next to our original assumption and see what exactly uh, we did wrong so this is ip we have vp equals ip and instead of the resistance we have np um over ns the whole square times r so um you know if there wasn't a transformer if we increase the primary voltage we would also be increasing the primary current assuming that the resistance is fixed correct but now because we have a transformer the effective resistance or let me call that r star has actually become np over ns the whole square times r right and remember ns was greater than np so np is less than ns so when it's squared it's going to be even smaller right np over ns is going to be less than 1 and when you square a number that's less than 1 uh, it's going to become even smaller and so this term is going to be much lesser than r right what this tells us is that the, this is the beauty of a transformer right so for you know let's say i am the i am the power plant uh and i am just observing the voltage that i am producing the, and the current that i am sending with respect to the resistance right i am not worried about what happens in between right so from the perspective of the power plant the the transformer is actually reducing the resistance right this is something that i was really amazed when i first uh, understood that you know i was really naive when i thought about how increasing the voltage uh, would just increase the current because that's basic ohms law that we have all learned but we have to understand that because of this complex arrangement here um it somehow beautifully reduces the voltage uh, excuse me reduces the effective resistance that the power plant perceives so this is very unconventional terms this is the way i understand it not necessarily how electrical engineering is taught um and that's really the beauty of it because now effectively what happens is the power plant perceives the resistance to be really small all right and so it's going to send out a very high current in the primary coil correct 
And we do know that by the conservation of energy, uh, if the primary current is very high, uh, then the secondary current is going to be very low. All right. Correct. Because IP over IS is NS over NP. If NS is more than NP, then uh, IS has to be more than, uh, excuse me. If NS is more than NP, then IP has to be more than IS. So the current in the secondary coil is going to be really low. And it's the current in the secondary coil that determines the losses um, in the transmission line. All right. So to summarize, um, it is not correct to say that Ohm's law is violated because we actually have two different circuits and a transformer reduces the impedance that is perceived by the, by the source of voltage. And that, you know, coupled with the fact that energy is conserved is really going to reduce the current in the secondary coil, uh, thereby keeping losses really low. So I hope this gave you at least some insight into why step up transformers are used. And I hope next time you are driving, uh, you think a little more about what exactly is happening inside these transformers. With that, I hope you learned a lot from this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye.